in this video, we're going to be talking about the different ways of taking an input, and this will help you for any competition coding contest. Okay, so I'm going to be doing this in Java, and so I'm going to run through a few examples. So the first example is, what happens if the numbers are on different lines? So the question that we're given is, given n numbers on several lines, find their sum. So that seems simple enough. So what we need to do is we need to import java.util.scanner. And we're going to make a public class here. So public class main. And we have to create our main method here. OK. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a scanner class. So that's scanner sc is equal to new scanner system.in. And essentially what it says is, given n numbers. So we need to take in, as you can see, the number five here, and then we need to take in the rest of the numbers. So we're gonna go here, we're gonna take in the input for the integer n. And what we can do is we can store a sum variable to keep track of the current sum. So let's do that. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna loop n times and we're just going to take an input for each of these numbers here. So we're gonna say, well, we're gonna go five times, for example, and we're gonna say 90a, which is the current number. So maybe I'll even say that. I might even say current number is equal to sc.nextInt. So that means taking the input for the next number. And then all I need to do is I need to say sum plus equals current num. Then I can pretty much print it out, and then I'm done. So that's pretty much how you take numbers on different lines. There's actually nothing special about it, because the way that Java works is that it knows exactly whether or not you're working with numbers or with strings. So any spaces or new lines in between the numbers is not going to be counted. So it can pretty much count that as really blank or white space. So the next thing that we have is also, what happens if we have numbers on the same line? Now given n numbers on the same line, find their sum. So once again, we're given the same example, but this time the numbers are on the same line. Now you might be wondering, okay, well, do we need to change anything about that? Well, actually, no, we don't. Because once again, Java knows exactly what you're reading. So you're reading numbers, it's gonna say, okay, well, let's keep, taking an input until we find the next number. And so we can actually keep all of this the exact same. Now, one thing that you need to watch out for is that these integers actually have a limit. So what happens if each of these current nums is actually the maximum limit of an integer? Then what happens is you're actually going to get overflow and your program is going to be incorrect. And so what we need to do is we need to make our sum variable right here a little larger. So how do we make it a little larger? What we can actually do, and oops, what we can actually do is make this a long. And essentially a long is just a larger integer, but it takes up more space, but it allows you to keep track of larger sums over cumulative sums or cumulative numbers and so we're going to keep it like this okay the next thing that we have is a 2d array of numbers so what happens if we're given an n by m matrix of numbers or in other words an array and we wanted to find the sum of all the numbers well it's actually really easy because this is actually also nothing special once again java only looks for the numbers when you specify to look for the numbers so let's come up here and let's delete these lines here. So we're going to say uh, 7 to 12, delete that. Okay, so we're given not only the integer n, we're also given an integer m. So let's go here and create that integer m here. Now we're given an array, right? So let's actually take in that array as, or let's actually create that array as a 2D array here. So array is equals new array of size n by m. So that creates an n by m array where n is the number of rows 
and m is the number of columns. And then how do we take an input? Well, it's actually really simple. All we need to do is assume that Java only looks at the numbers, right? It's not gonna look at any new lines or any spaces. So it's perfectly fine if we do this. And so what we can say here is array ij. So think about this, we're going through all the rows and for each row, we're gonna go through all the columns and we're gonna say array ij is equal to sc.nextint. And so this takes an input for the matrix or the 2D array for you. So remember it goes row first and then you're going for each column, right? Think about it line by line. Now, how do I store the sum? Well, once again, I'm actually gonna make a long sum because once again, what happens if I overflow? Well, I, I don't really want to overflow, so I need to make a long sum here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through each of the numbers in my 2D array here. And I'm just going to add them to the sum, like so. And this will actually take an input for the sum for me. And then all I need to do is print out the sum like so. Okay. So let's look at the next example. What happens if we're given a string of a full line? Given a, sen given a sentence, or actually this should be sentence, print how many spaces there are. So for example, if we had, hello, welcome to doorway education, well, the output would actually be one. So you can see there's one here, two, three, and then four. So let's try that out. Okay, so I'm gonna delete lines uh, six to 20. And so how do we take in a full line of input? So the way we do that is we say string s is equal to sc.next line. And so what that says is it takes the whole entire line until it sees a new line character. So what can we do with that? Well, it's really simple. We're gonna loop through that array. So s.length, I believe. I believe it's something like that. And we're gonna just say, okay, create a counter for the number of spaces. And well, if s.char at i is equal to a space, right, the space character here, then what we can say is count plus plus. And then finally, system.out.println count. And there we go, we're done. You know, taking in a line of text, a whole line, and then counting the number of spaces there are. Okay, and the final example that I have is string word by word. So given n words, count how many are exactly hello. So in this case, I have six words, right? And I'm taking in all of these different words. And notice that they're all on, you know, different lines, spacing is different, and whatever. But actually, Java doesn't actually care about all this stuff. All it cares about is anything that's not a white space and that's bunched together. So how do I take in a word? Well, I'll show you right now. So essentially what we have is, let's delete 6 to 13. We have an integer n, which is the number of words I want to take in. I'm going to loop through n times like we've done before. And how do I just take in a word? I don't want to take in the whole line, I just want to take a word. So the way we do that is we say string word is equal to sc.next. So no next line, just next, and that will take in just a word for you. Okay, so then all we need to do is we need to check whether or not this word right here is hello. So if word.equals hello, then what I can do is I can say count plus plus, and obviously we need to create that count variable here. And once again, you can make that long if you want, it doesn't matter. And that's pretty much it for taking an input, the different styles in Java.